Hello, listeners. Welcome to episode 30. This is the doctor and the dork, Frank, here with our co host, is Olivia. Is that what you say? You say, Welcome to the doctor and the dork. This is episode 30. I'm changing it up. I'm trying to be friendly <laughs> and inviting. You say, Hello, podcast. <laughs> it's going to be a long one, guys. I'm trying to get the. Um, Robin Williams, uh, you know, Good Morning Vietnam. Oh my God, you've never even seen that. All right. Anyway, guys, welcome to episode 30. We're happy to have you here. We're in a great mood today, and we have a great episode for you. Take it away, Olivia. Um, Hello, everybody. I would just like to start off this episode by reminding you all that since this is episode 30, we have a lovely guest at the end. So stay tuned to listen to comedian and drug rep Don and our interview with him but first you have to bear through 15 minutes of us so you're not even gonna plug don's last name it's because i always worry because it sounds so similar to this kid i went to pharmacy school and then i'm always so worried i'm gonna mess it up but kinsley yes don kinsley because somebody the other kid in my school his name was kingsley and i'm always afraid i'm gonna it's kinsley And he is a fantastic comedian, guys. Stick around to about 15 minutes, or you can fast forward over our (laughs) shenanigans and listen to his shenanigans, because it was a great pod. Yeah, Um, I think so. But all right, um, why don't you give them the week in review? Because I did all the talking last episode. That's true. You did do a lot of talking. Sorry for that, guys. Um, So this past week, we went home and we visited my family to celebrate one belated Christmas and two, my little brother's sixth birthday. Sully, if you're listening, happy sixth birthday from the Happy belated sixth birthday, Sully. Um, We had a pretty good time. We stayed with my aunt. We were going to stay with my grandma, but we were worried. We didn't want to infect her since we're young people who are out and about. We would definitely probably give her the COVID. If I listened to this, I was like secretly kind of disappointed that we didn't have those fantastic drinks she made Mm, last time. Yeah. And I was like kind of hoping. I think she still had the rum, but when I looked in the fridge and saw there wasn't any pineapple juice, I knew Mm. we weren't getting them. No, I don't even know what those were. (laughs) I don't um, know either. Malibu oh, no. Sunrises yeah, or something? Oh, yeah. Um, what is it? Malibu Bay Breeze? Yeah, they I were think. very delicious. Oh, God. And she just made them so well. Yeah. So, I, if you listen, you're Next a fantastic time. We're drink maker. For them. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think we had a pretty nice weekend. We got gifts from my parents and a couple family members. So, it was good to visit the fam. It was. I had a good time. Yeah. I was nervous. I was nervous COVID was going to ruin the whole thing. You know, thing. I think Frankie was nervous he was going to give one of my elderly relatives COVID until probably Sully's birthday party when half the neighborhood who were definitely showed young up. and yeah. not healthy <laughs> Yeah, I was up. just like, okay. Meanwhile, my grandmother's like trying not to breathe in the air. <laughs> I just, I consistently, um, which guys, we're not that crazy. Actually, most of the people at the party had already had COVID yeah. and were cleared to like be fine. Yeah. So, and we had negative tests. So everyone yeah. there was actually okay, but still it just, I don't know, you it felt weird. Know. Um, and I don't know, even having a negative test, I just can't help but feel like I've avoided my own grandparents and my family and stuff this year. Yeah. Somehow and, a negative test just still doesn't feel good enough. I don't know. I heard about too many false negatives. And yeah. I just, I'm like, well, how do I know I'm not just asymptomatic? Yeah. You know? Like, I don't know. Weird fear to have. I just, I don't mind going near my friends because they're all young and healthy. Yeah, they can handle it. Yeah, I feel bad going near the elderly. I'd rather just pass it, even if I am okay. I feel you. So. Anyways, so we did that. Um, I think this week, since it is the start of the new year, happy new year, podcast listeners. Um, I thought we'd mention some of our resolutions. I meant to relook at what my list was and I didn't, so I'm just oh. going to kind of wing it. Well, I'll go off of my three. I'm okay. going to bring up my three physical, um, my, my personal goals here. So for the year, I would like to get back into my long distance running. And um, I sincerely mean it. I, I was hoping in 2020 to have been able to do a couple of marathons and they all got taken taken mm-hmm. out. And um, yeah, there were really no big sporting events really. And uh, Olivia managed to find a 5K to do this yeah, year. Yeah, I don't know how I did And that. I was so mad I had to work that 10K, day. 10K, actually. Yeah, it was a 10K. Yeah. And um, yeah, and I just, I don't know. I was, uh, I was kind of sore with myself about that. And uh, that I didn't get to do a marathon. I know I can go out and just do one myself, but 
Yeah. There's just something about doing one that's an actual event. There's just yeah. so many people. The energy is there. There's yeah. people supporting you. I feel like your ambition, too, to run your best is going to be when you're in a race situation. Because you can look at the person ahead of you who's just running ever so slightly quicker than you and use them as exactly. you know, your and, pace. And... You know, I might be a not-too-shabby runner, but yeah, I'm not, that, I'm not that good of a runner where I can just go wing a marathon yeah. by pure willpower. Like, I'm sure, you know, put a gun to my head, I probably could. Yeah. But, like, I don't know. I just, yeah. I'm so much more motivated if there's others doing it with me. And All right, well, we got to make this sure. We got to guess. <laughs> What's your next other two? Um, so, my other two is I'd like to back get back into rock climbing. Shout out to Prime Climb based out of Wallingford. Mm. You guys were my original home, and I'm going back to you guys here shortly. Um, I want to be able to send not just any old V6. I want to send a Prime V6. Mm. So, for those of you listeners that know me or have gone climbing there, um, there is a clear difference between Prime Climb and other gyms. And their rating scale is just um, So some it's of crazy. my friends have been to Central Rock. Why don't you give them a translation so, between one to the well, other? Well, they've actually, a few of them have even been to Prime. And mm. a Prime 6, yeah. hell, I'll even go and say like a Prime V2 is yeah. like a V4 in any other gym. I would agree because I'm able to go to other gyms and at least try a V3. And Prime, I'm like, if I can send a V1, I'm like, damn. Yeah, I'm I would say they're typically at least two levels off at all times. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if the other gyms are just really bad and Prime just has some excellent climbers. I kind of think that is. I think some of the other gyms market towards, I don't know, more leisurely climbers. Yeah. Whereas Prime, there's a serious climbing crowd in there. Yeah. Like they're there. It's like the difference between going to Planet Fitness and going to like one of those backyard gyms mm. that's like there's ten people that go, but they're all just in insanely good shape. Yeah. All and, right. Uh, next. But yeah, so I want to send a V6. That's the goal. Or I want to top rope a five twelve. Right. All right. We don't got time to hear about no, all you of your rock climbing. You get out of here. You get out of here. My segment's almost done. All right. See you. Bye. <laughs> And my last one is I don't have any specific goal for yoga, but I would like to carry yoga into uh, 2020. I picked it up back in 2018 and uh, I tried it for a month Mm -hmm. and I had a good, I liked it. Mm -hmm. I tried it again in 2019 and then I met my wonderful girlfriend, Olivia here, who is a avid yoga or yogi. yogi. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, a yoga er. I was gonna say yoga er, but um, <laughs> and I have followed in her example, and I'm all the better for it. I can touch my toes. It's alleviated a lot of my back problems, mm. and uh, I look forward to just getting better at yoga. I'm not gonna say I'm gonna try and do a split or anything, because mm. that's, I, yeah, I can. I'm happy I can touch my toes. Mm. <laughs> but what are your resolutions? Um, so the ones that I can think of, my resolutions are one: I'd like to volunteer at least once a month. Um, this is something I signed up just over a year ago with the Salvation Army to volunteer and every week I get the emails and I have yet to sign up for even one single volunteering opportunity. But I think mm. doing something at least once a month will be helpful to my soul. Mm. Number two is I'd like to practice the piano slash keyboard one hour a week. And I know people are probably thinking, one hour a week, you're never going to get better. And, like, that's fine. I'm really not trying to be a piano pro. I think my big thing I'd like to be able to do at the end of this year is, like, um, fluently read bass clef. So I played the French horn, so that was never using bass clef. And so when I use that now, it takes me, like, an extra five seconds to kind of translate and be like, okay, that would be a B in treble clef. So if I move up one, it'd be, you know, a D. See, I'm not musically inclined at all, so you're talking gibberish here. But no, I think one hour a week is a good goal. If yeah. you even get 1% better on yeah. every hour that you do, yeah. by the end of the year, you'll be 50% better. Yeah, I just think, I don't know, keyboard's something like ever since I was a kid I wanted to learn, so maybe it's time to try it. And my last one it was just to be more physically fit. A um, couple things like... One, I want to be less weight-centered and more fitness-centered. But two, going off of that, like your fitness when it comes to your health is like 
one of the very few things you actually have control over. You know, if you have asthma, if you have some immune condition, like those are things you just can't help. But in terms of like being fit, like that's very well within your means of control. So hmm. I'm hoping just to be a little more fit this year. Well, heck, even the running you said has helped your asthma, or at least yeah. your tolerance of it. Yeah. I don't think running can cure asthma, but I think it raises your tolerance of how far you can go. I think so. So. But uh, yeah, that's basically it. Well, I'm you want to say anything else before we jump into our segments? No, why don't you take the doctor segment? I've okay. only got like two minutes, so. Okay, mine will probably take four minutes. So <laughs> last week I promised you all that this week I would provide a lineup of who said to get the corona vaccine first, at least for those of you who are interested. So that's what I'm going to do today. It's going to be a shorter than usual segment as to not prolong our guest <clears throat> podcast. Okay, so that's broken down into a few different phases via the CDC. So the first phase the CDC has recommended is phase 1A. So the people who would get it in during phase 1A, which is where we're currently at, are healthcare personnel, so if you're a doctor, nurse, pharmacist, whoever, that you're on the front line taking care of COVID patients, your first step, along with patients that are in a long-term care facility. Next up is phase 1B, which I anticipate will probably be in shortly, and these are essential workers. Now, it's weird because essential workers appear in both phase 1B and 1C, so I'll give you some examples of these essential workers that qualify first for stage 1B, and those are firefighters, police officers, correctional officers, um, people who work at like the grocery store, USPS. Basically, the best way I could describe this is if you were somebody who was still going to work when we were on that like two-week lockdown, you're somebody who would be qualified to get the vaccine in phase 1B. In addition to that, people who are 75 years and older are able to get the vaccine during stage 1B. Next up, and this is the last phase of phase one, and that is phase 1C. Um, These are going to be your less essential workers, not my definition. This is simply how the CDC is phrasing it. So this is basically if you're anybody who's still going to work that was not part of that other essential group. I don't know why they broke it into this way, but they list things like finance, housing, law, media, a bunch of very vague jobs but basically if your employer is making you go into work but you didn't go during that two-week lockdown you would fall into phase 1c and also and this is the thing i told you guys i really wanted to look up was for phase 1c anybody who is um 16 years and older with a pre-existing condition qualifies now shockingly all of this um information was very easy to find on the cdc's website except for this what is considered a pre-existing diet um condition So I found a systematic review that kind of said um, conditions that are strongly or moderately associated with an increased coronavirus risk, and these are a few of the things that were on that list. Um, If you have cancer, chronic kidney disease, COPD, a cardiac condition, obesity, pregnant, sickle cell, smoker, transplant, Mm -hmm. diabetes, asthma, you're on some sort of immune suppression, you have hypertension. Um, A couple interesting things I'd like to point out there is, one, this vaccine was not studied in a pregnant population, so it would be interesting to see whether or not that would be considered a pre-existing condition. Two, is that obesity and smoker on there? So I guess, like, if you really want to get the vaccine but you don't have one of those conditions yet, just get out there and start smoking a pack a day or (laughs) eating all the cookies and now you're qualified. I don't really recommend that, but I do think it's interesting. So let me pick your brain here because I believe you saw this article as well. I know I sent it to you um, that they had noticed uh, a correlation between vitamin D deficiency and coronavirus severity. I don't know if you had time to read it, but guys, if you get time, there is an article kicking around. Um, you, I'm sure you could just Google vitamin D deficiency in coronavirus. I did but. not have a chance to read that. However, I have seen that popping up quite a bit. Um, I have two hesitancies in terms of like, uh, I don't know, really backing up that information. One is just the amount of things that we've saw that have been associated with coronavirus <laughs> risk is like the same number we see that are increasing your cancer risk. Okay. So I think that until more studies validate it, I don't really want to go around promoting it quite yet. And two is that like majority of the population, corona or not, is also deficient in vitamin D. So I think it's hard to say like just because 80% of corona patients were deficient in vitamin D, like 
possibly 80 percent of the general public regardless of covid correlation not causation yeah so. yeah so it just happens there but i mean too, you might as well take your vitamin d anyways <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know I'm, I'm, i swear by it but that's for my own personal I don't know. I think I'm happier when I take my vitamin D I consistently. Like speaking of, I didn't take my vitamin B or my vitamin D today. <laughs> um, but real quick, the last group that's a go in phase 1C is those patients 65 to 74. And after that, we move into phase 2, and that's everybody that I haven't mentioned so far. So. All right. That's it. Well, thank you for the info, You're Doc. You're very welcome. Um, all right, guys. I have like a minute to run here. So um, <laughs> real quick, we are in January 2021. And uh, let's see here. We have some free games for PlayStation. Um, if you're still like me and you're rocking a PS4, we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which was a very good game. I played the first one. This is the sequel. Um, you also have Greedfall, which I don't know anything about it. I know it was an open world RPG game. And uh, I had heard it had good reviews. I believe it came out a year or two ago. Um, I believe it's in... Um, old uh like civil war era times uh mm. america or london it, the outfits kind of give it away they're wearing funny top hats and they have muskets so mm. i'm assuming sometime muskets. around there um and then we have a third game for the ps5 it's called man eater um and if you bought the game uh sony is actually giving you refunds on man eater if you would purchase it because they're releasing it for free They've oh. been doing a lot of refunds lately, which is I very out say, of character. I feel like that, I don't know, how's their stock doing? Right? Um, Just Vine actually was yeah. up today, I'm surprised. I noticed. Um, but anyway, so uh, yeah, they're doing uh, yeah, a free game for PS5. Now, I don't know if you can get the PS4 games um, for the, the PS5, PS5, so you'd get three. I don't know if you can, but it's something to look into. If you have a PS5, why don't you send us an email at dork <laughs> at gmail.com, spell out doctor, spell out and. <laughs> all right guys lastly the time is nigh the end times are upon us adobe has abandoned flash i talked about it way earlier this year yeah way before and we um like. here it is guys i didn't believe it and it has come to pass they've dropped flash just cold turkey they are done supporting it it still works guys so don't need to worry there but like any other abandoned software, if they're not constantly putting patches out, it leaves it open to all kinds of bugs. Um, it's only going to degrade from here. So um, realistically, if you're still running Adobe Flash on your computer and they haven't sent you a prompt asking you to uninstall it or swap it out, you should start looking to uh, these other um, you know, possible replacements. Um, so you have HTML5. You have WebGL, and you have WebAssembly. Now, of the three, um, WebGL and WebAssembly are kind of the the smaller two. They've been around, um, and they're they work just fine. Um, they're really, I think, used for like smaller games. Um, you know, people designing their games on a smaller scale. But uh, HTML5, it was argued for a long time who would come out on top, HTML or you know Adobe Flash. Now and we know. We have the answer. HTML has won out because here they are still, and Adobe kind of funny has though, fallen. Because never have I ever heard of HTML5 before today. I knew what Flash was since I was <laughs> well. Like this seven is actually the old. fifth iteration yeah, of it. So they they had other iterations, but yeah. So um, that's all I have for you guys this week. Sorry it was short. But um, we're going to get out of your ear and listen yeah. to our uh, the rest of the pod, please. Please listen. And just in case you don't think you want to listen to the rest of the pod, um, Donna's going to be performing this Friday at 7 o'clock at The Shish, which is in West Hartford. I think the log name for it is the shish kebab something of afghanistan i don't know i'll find out and put it officially at the end of the pod <laughs> um yes he plugs his uh current um his uh current act on friday and that has changed as olivia just pointed out yeah so um i'll try to remind you guys at the end of the interview yeah but we'll have more uh comedy dates you know in the future all right guys happy new year and uh, we can't wait to hear from you later kind of three two one action (laughs) (laughs) all right hello podcast listeners today we have a guest on the doctor and the dork his name is don don welcome to the show hello podcast people (laughs) (laughs) how are you today don 
Uh, listen, I'm I'm fantastic, uh, and I, I I'm I, I just love that I got invited to be on this podcast. It's the highlight of my year so far. Is this the biggest uh, podcast you've ever been on? It's the well, one of my New Year's resolutions to, was to be on one of the the highest rated podcasts in Southeast Meriden. <laughs> After giving you guys a five star rating yesterday, you guys now have three. Wow. Uh, reviews oh, so far of five star ratings. And I actually wrote something. Wow, you did well. you. I hope it was only something positive. But before we start, Olivia, I was gonna ask you if you could just go over the email address again. Because the first 72 times <laughs> I heard it, I was not quite sure if there's a the before it, or not. So could you no just go the. if you really want to mess <laughs> up, you can do the DR and the DRK. Just no, to really don't. ruin it. <laughs> I know you have uh, millions of people writing in, but make sure you get the email address correct. <laughs> millions. So uh, Don's already kicked us off with some <laughs> jokes. So I think that'd be an excellent segue to my next question, which is for Don to tell us a little bit about himself. Well, thank you. I didn't know that question was coming. Um, <laughs> uh, well, Olivia and Frankie, I, I grew up in New Hampshire. Uh, I've lived in Connecticut for the past 14 years. Uh, you may know this, but I work in the pharmaceutical industry. So, yes, I do sell drugs <laughs> for everyone out there. So another dealer. legal drug dealer we have. Always makes that joke. Oh, you're a drug dealer. Yes, I am a drug dealer. <clears throat> uh, I'm a golfer. I'm an avid golfer. I love the outdoors. I love fishing, uh, hiking. I love getting drunk on rooftop bars. <laughs> um, I, about a year ago, I, I got into comedy. I got into the comedy business and I started doing, uh, I became a comedian about a year ago. And it actually happened at an institution that you work at, Olivia, although I don't know if we want to say that. Um, but I have a friend of mine, his name is Angel Rentis and he is, uh, works over at Hartford Hospital. And he is a, I would say he's a real comedian. He's been doing it for 30 years. <laughs> he gave me an opportunity to, uh, to get up on stage last year in October of 2019. And I was supposed to do five minutes. I ended up doing 17. And uh, since then I've done about 25 shows. Wow. I did my first uh, show in New York City in March, uh, March 7th actually, right before hell broke loose. Mm. Uh, okay. In, the world. Uh, in fact, the day that I did my comedy show, the state of New York declared a state of emergency. Oh, do you think that was maybe uh, more related to your comedy show than it was? Well, I, I didn't bomb that night. I, I had, I think I had a pretty good set. Right. And <laughs> I, I definitely bombed. I think I probably bombed the night you two came to see me. No, but, that was fine. Uh, I'll get into that later. <laughs> um, let's see. I am, I am single. Uh, I've been single for so long. Somebody asked me who I was with, and I said Verizon. Uh, I actually I think hope Lisa I'm, listens to this episode. She gets get she a good might, chuckle. You might get a chance <laughs> to listen to it. I think I actually am cursed, and you know, we'll, we'll get into New Year's resolutions. But I am cursed. They say that there's someone for everyone in this world, but I feel like that every time I walk into a room, there's an odd number of people. Mm, I can relate. In fact, that. right now there's an odd number of people <laughs> in this room, and so again, That's I'm true. cursed. Uh, so that's a little bit about me, uh, and, and I know you have maybe other questions, but moving forward after this, I have a tremendous amount of questions for the two of you. A tremendous amount, oh, huh? Because I, I've listened to all 29 episodes. Oh, no, that's not good. In one fashion or another, and <laughs> there, I seem to have more questions than anything else right. based mm. on everything that I've listened to. Well, we'll to. try not to spend too much time bothering you so that you can give us the, the third degree. But I do you want to start maybe building off some of that comedy information? Yeah. So um, I was just curious. So what really got you into comedy? You said your friend Angel, who I believe we met that night at the comedy yeah. show. Yeah, he was there. Um, you know, he got you into it. But I, I would hardly think that, you know, if you weren't funny to start off with or if you hadn't been uh, fumbling around with the idea in the first place, you wouldn't have gotten into it. So uh, I, I think I think. I, I've always wanted to, I've always been fascinated by comedy and I love stand up comedy. I love going to shows. I love funny people. Uh, I love funny movies. I love funny shows. And I, I and, and 
you know, it's, I don't think it's egotistical. egotistical is that the word? Yeah. Mm. I always go to Olivia for that. <laughs> um, to say that, you know, I've generally always been funny. I think my friends have always said that I'm probably the funny one. I'm not the good looking person in the group. I'm the funny one. Mm. Uh, Can't have it so all. I have to get by on my, on my sense of humor more than my looks. So, and I've, and I've, over the years, I've actually tried to write jokes on my own and never really had the chance, never really took the opportunity to actually see if I could actually get on stage and do it. And just so happens meeting Angel last year, I, I said, look, I'd love the opportunity if you could to get me on stage. And he gave me that opportunity and I, 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 I took advantage of it. I, I prepared for it. I wrote jokes. I continue to write jokes to this day. And uh, I think it's, it's, it's really, really hard to do comedy. I would, I would say to get up on stage and have anywhere from 25 to 85 people looking at you and Olivia, you've been to a couple of my shows. Yeah. I always, I always look to you to, and I know that you always have a laugh in your face more, (laughs) more so it's out of confusion. (laughs) <laughs> based on some of the jokes that I tell uh, but I think Frankie gets most of my jokes um, he's got a little bit of a better sense of humor than you do <laughs> it's possible which I, which I appreciate possible. Um, so yeah I just look it's just one of those things I wish I started 30 years ago mm. uh, you know I might be famous now who knows I say are you planning on quitting your day job anytime soon no, I think if you've been to a couple of my shows, you know I pretty much should not quit my day job. <laughs> uh, you know, we've, I've, I, I enjoy it, and I think it's something that I'd like to do, obviously, part-time. I do about one show a month now. Mm-hmm. At, at one point, I will plug my next show so that Perfect. your 37 viewers can maybe call ahead and get, <laughs> get tickets to the show on Friday night. But I, Well, at least I, two of them will be there. Yeah. Well, I hope so. Oh, I don't awesome. it, won't be, it won't be you two. A lot of my friends actually are coming now that they've gotten the vaccine, the ones that yeah. work as frontline healthcare workers. Uh, hopefully they're more comfortable going into a basement uh, filled with people uh, yeah. at the elbow room uh, having been vaccinated already. Where's a few of the places that you've done shows? So I saw you so, at the elbow room. You saw me at the Elbow Room. You you actually saw me at a show in Meriden. Yeah, I did. The BYOB. That was when I barely knew you. Yeah, I barely knew Frankie then too. Oh, yeah, I think man. you guys. Had, I think you guys had started dating uh, around yeah. that time. <laughs> um, and be, uh, so I've I've been at Mohegan Sun. I've I've been at the Broadway Comedy Club in New York City. Um, I've done actually college graduation parties. I've done a couple of those. Oh. Done, uh, during COVID, I've done a number of Zoom calls. So one thing, if you've seen a couple of my shows, I have a very clean show and I have a very dirty show. Yeah. Um, and and when I say dirty, I don't swear, but some of my content is is probably not appropriate and might get me fired <laughs> if, I, if I do a show. In fact, last uh, couple of weeks, Olivia, I did a show for Hartford HealthCare. Mm-hmm. Uh, for their pharmacy, the entire pharmacy across their healthcare system. Oh, I did a really nice, clean show for them. That's nice. Though. That must have been hard for you. It, 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 was. <laughs> it was hard for me. Yes, it was. Um, I, uh, but I do have two shows, so I have a clean one and a dirty one. And okay, I should say dirty. It's uh, it's not dirty. Um, it's 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 good fun. It's all in good fun. No. So, which act uh, do you enjoy doing more? I would assume the dirty one. Oh, I enjoy doing the, the, the full show at a bar, at a comedy club. Uh, no, no bars, no bars held or whatever. What's the expression, Olivia? I have literally no idea no what you're holds, trying to say. No holds barred. I think that's the, I think that's the expression. It is today. Yeah. <laughs> it's an old wrestling expression. No, no filter. Um, of course, in this day and age, I do have a filter in that I don't do anything that's controversial. Like I stay away from politics. Mm. I stay away from mm. anything that might be controversial in this day and age. Uh, although <laughs> that's, that's te- technically not what comedy should be about. Mm. You should be able to express yourself and, and everyone should know that it's just a joke. It's just comedy. It's just trying to make people laugh. Yeah. And so as I evolve, I'm only a year into this. I think as I evolve, I will get maybe a little bit more controversial. 
Mm -hmm. uh, jokes will be a little bit better than they are now yeah. as, I, as I continue to evolve as a comedian. That's fair. Um, would you say doing some more shows is one of your New Year's resolutions? Good question, Olivia. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is for sure. And I have one uh, coming up. Oh, doing new shows, writing new material, doing different venues. Of course, it's still tough. You know, we're the, you know, because of COVID, not many comedy clubs are open. Mm. It still happens. The one that I that I do work at is continues to be open on Friday and Saturday nights. Oh. But I do hope to continue. It is one of my New Year's resolution. As of course, as I said earlier, I just accomplished my first one by being on this podcast. <laughs> we got more on in the list. Um, I'd like to get into another bad relationship. Yeah, another. Another bad relationship somewhere down the line. Setting your uh, <laughs> sights pretty high with that, then, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's true. I, I'm. I'm. I think I'm. I'd like to get a colonoscopy this year. Oh, um, big, and a haircut. Big, a haircut, really? Are you just gonna yeah, get a trim, or? I don't know where I'm at with the haircut, Olivia. I know. I know we're on a podcast and nobody can see my hair. <laughs> That's but, okay. Uh, hoping that you post a picture of me on your. Oh yeah, we can do uh, that. Put in a plug right now for your Instagram account. Oh yeah, it is Doctor and Dork. <laughs> Dr. Andork or the Dr. Andork? And it's quite confusing our listeners. They're already confused enough. <laughs> um, I actually didn't put, I was going to, last year I had a resolution to lose 25 pounds by December 31st. Mm -hmm. Right okay. now I've got 40 more to go. Uh, <laughs> tricky how that happens. So I don't, I don't, I don't put any, uh, I just want to work out more. I think it's something I, I might do. I might do a Zumba class here or there somewhere. Hmm. Uh, jazzercise something like that i could see you doing some jazzercise yeah <laughs> well those are pretty good yeah that's uh i can't believe you're gonna lose the fabio look you know the the, the luscious locks going on it's here. funny uh frankie i actually have a fabio joke so when i when i uh one of my opening lines it, in my show is i wear an orange jacket and i and you know again nobody can see me so they don't know what i look like but I basically look like a Dollar Tree version of Fabio. It just fucked an orange Tic Tac. <laughs> um, to our listeners, if you want, why don't you write into drindork at gmail.com and tell us your favorite Don joke throughout this podcast so he knows which ones to leave in his uh, upcoming skits. <laughs> can I can I say a few things now? Yeah, it's all yes. you. You got yeah. the floor. I just have to say, you know, and I have, I'm probably the only person that's, well, maybe not, that's listened to every single episode. One of the and few. I will ones. say that uh, I think you guys are fantastic. Uh, and all honestly, I think you guys are really good. I think you have something. Mm -hmm. However, I do have a couple of critiques. We're ready. Oh, let's Let me it. get my wine glass ready. Yeah, okay. you no, know, this has been a long time coming. You know, <laughs> everyone's kept their lips pretty tightly sealed about this. And uh, it's finally you've come we a long way. Actually, you've come a long way since the first episode when you pondered the lack of buttholes and penises. On the <laughs> I mean, tell me it isn't a question that needs to be like. I've never seen a butthole on an alien. So That's what I'm saying. You know, it's a valid watch, question. When I watch these movies, I actually look for the butthole now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to expand the mind. Um, I don't. So, Frankie. Yeah. You have an expression that you say all the time and, and probably too much. And I need to at least have you minimize the number of times you say it. There's yeah. only two things that you say all the time and drive me crazy. Hey guys, <laughs> guys, guys, hey guys, 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 guys. I'm going to point it out now every time he does it. Hey guys. Oh. And, uh, and I, in fact, I started a new drinking game with my friends is every time Frankie says, Hey guys, yeah, we have a shot of vodka. <laughs> oh, that'll, that'll kill you actually. And truth be told is the other one. You say truth be told a lot. Now, listen, you guys are, this, this podcast is fantastic. And 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 um, it's just for me. I notice little stupid things all the time. But you two have a great rapport. Like I really, I actually really enjoy listening to your podcast. I I do have to say that Frankie, I tune out when you get to the whole gaming thing. I have I have, and and that's just one part of it. That's fine. That's just me. Uh, but I I actually fast forward through the whole gaming thing because I have no idea what you're talking about when you do the gaming thing. Would you feel but, then that you're more of a doctor than you are a dork when it comes to the no, doctor and the dork? I am more of a doctor, but I also like Frankie's take on tech. Mm. I like his tech on, uh, take, take on tech. I like <laughs> his take on 
um, movies and uh, and television shows. Okay. All right. It's just the whole gaming thing for me is it's it's You're it's way over my head. It's it, you know I I played games video games when I was in college like Pac Man and <laughs> you know Galaga oh, behind the curve here then. Yeah. So <laughs> other than that, I I think um, I think you guys are awesome. I think you have you have something going there with the report. I feel like Frankie complains a lot. Mm. The <laughs> you know olivia seems to think that too you know it's, uh... i mean i'm not disagreeing <laughs> with anything that's been said so far <laughs> so funny enough that you mentioned my my hey guys and my <laughs> truth be told so um at one point in my life i actually went and started uh with a group called toastmasters um yep. who really focus on giving speeches and, and you know, public speaking and so on and so forth i know it well and, um I found that uh, I'm utterly terrible yeah. and I just have the worst, just, I I'm actually the worst. Certain. I just fall into the worst speech patterns. Yeah. And like every time I would eliminate one, I pick would always, I would just pick up a new one <laughs> every single time. It was, I'd get away from saying, but 8 million times or, you know, mm. truth be told or, Hey guys. And it just something else would fill its place. <laughs> we'll in a love week. to see what else refills its <laughs> place. Then is what that sounds like. No, you actually have a really, you have a really good voice. <laughs> good podcast. Honestly, you have a good, you have a, you definitely have a face fit for radio. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I've been told that before. This is this is like uh, me. Look who's talking now. <laughs> uh, I noticed that you could sum up your entire podcast, and you're basically picking fruits and gourds and drinking beer. I'd say that that's pretty good. Episode. Yeah, that's um, yeah, that's pretty spot on. I'd say. Think so. Well, Thanks. less beer, more wine. Yeah. Um, our friends are do most of the beer drinking. That's true. So. That's true. I did just start dating somebody. She's uh, I, I, as, as you know, Olivia, I tend to. Date. I hope it's not this joke that I think is going to be existing. No, it's not. It's, it's, okay. Why does everything have to be a joke? I uh, no. tell me. I started dating somebody recently because you know I generally date younger women, but I decided to date somebody a lot older than me. So she's seventy-seven. But it's it's not it's more friends with benefits than it is anything else. I, what people with women that age it's just uh i help her spend her pension mm. I, that one it didn't land it's, i want to <laughs> use that one <laughs> i'm just testing, the, uh, I'm using Keanu this as an opportunity to test out new jokes <laughs> <laughs> yeah that one i'm gonna get if i had one of your little signs right now i'd hold up like the well, red one yeah that that i have a lot of people that like that joke you know you can't make everybody laugh all I the guess, time. I guess that's fair. Don't worry, Don. I liked it. She's just a harsh critic. All right. She's very harsh on my <laughs> extremely. You know, harsh. um, on Rotten Tomatoes, when movies get a zero percent <laughs> and then it hits the uh, the public yeah. rating and it gets a, like an eighty or a hundred, Olivia is one of the critics that's <laughs> nerfing it into the ground. She she Whatever. kills it all. Yeah, I'm gonna. You know, maybe Frankie, you can break break off into your own po- podcast one day, and we can <laughs> we can have a little bit more fun. <laughs> Uh, yeah, right. Is it time? This is now time for question and answer time with Frankie and Olivia. I have oh, a couple of questions for you. Okay, right. Oh, let's hear it. So, Frankie, uh, the biggest question is what kind of shoes did you end up buying? Oh, I wish we had when them. You when you and Olivia go out to dinner, because that was a big topic of conversation. Yeah, that was started. um when we went to ASICs, right? No, I remember you looked at his shoes. Oh, Those yes, were- I'm sorry. So we ended up purchasing, and by we, I mean Olivia ended up picking out Kohl's. some shoes for me here from Kohl's. Um, for you, for you, Kohl's. I don't know what they were called, though. I think they were one of Kohl's brands. But needless to say, um, they're easily the most stylish shoes I have. But um, they're they're very, uh, I feel like a hipster. Yeah. And uh, I even got the tight pants to go with them now. Yeah, the tight and, jeans. Yeah. yeah, easily uh, Olivia's favorite outfit well, for me. you needed to have one outfit for when we go out and see somewhat professional people. Next together. show next show that you guys come to, I expect to see the tight jeans and the shoes. Oh, I'll wear them. Don't <laughs> worry. I mean, I'm, I'm slowly breaking them in. But the shoes are, uh, you can tell that they definitely are not expensive, but they look a whole lot better than my cruddy boots, <laughs> you know? So. Right. Okay. So I'm looking at the time now. I, I'll, I'm trying to be quick with the time. That's okay. So far, Olivia, this is a doctor question. Okay. So far, it seems only men and women have gotten the coronavirus. I, mean, this is, I already know. What about the 47 others? <laughs> 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 this is not going to be the joke. When you said you were
we're being political or controversial. I was like, well, I can think of a couple. You want me to finish? Because you just talk right over. <laughs> yeah. You know, I thought Don here was the comedian. All right. All right yeah, go ahead. Restart the joke. <laughs> so you know how only men and women have gotten the coronavirus? Uh-huh. Mm. What about the other 79 genders? I don't know. I don't know, Don. <laughs> All right. So next question. How are you guys? I'm curious. How are you guys doing with spicing up the relationship? Um, I noticed episode 13 or 15, there was a lot of talk about spicing it up. I want to know a couple of the things that you guys have done to spice it up. Well, we started puzzling together. Yes. So we've uh, our version of spicing up has actually devolved us into elderly people. Um, which has involved reading, watching shows at night, eating dinner early, and yeah. Um, puzzling. Yeah. Um, yeah, puzzling I, I also do as well. Yeah, how is your puzzle going, Dan? Are you on the same one still? Um, I finished the 500 piece, and now I'm on the 1,000 piece, but the 1,000 piece went back in the box for Christmas. Mm. I tried to put, keep as many of the pieces that I had done together, but it was all spread out all over my living room table, and I just... You know, I, I, I host a lot of parties, Yeah. as you know, because I've never invited you to any of them. And uh, <laughs> I, I needed to have some, my, my space available. So, so I'm, I'm back uh, probably tomorrow, tomorrow, Tuesday with the 1000 piece puzzle. I'll okay. keep you updated. All right. Yeah, but uh, that's about it. So and so does Frankie still, does Frankie go to bed angry? Um. All? No, we, we've been pretty good about not going to bed angry. No, that's, um, yeah, we avoid that at all costs. And, and you two have separate rooms, correct? Because you aren't married at this point. So, <laughs> yes. You're right, yeah, for sure. Separate rooms. <laughs> <laughs> what are, so my, my last question, and then, and I, I, I feel like I'm running this podcast now. <laughs> <laughs> we, I mean, we have given you the floor here. So, <laughs> my last question, and then I have a, a, a pop culture update. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are your future plans for the podcast anything exciting coming up after episode 30 well uh, starting episode 31 we're going to start recording videos to post on youtube rather than for all of our youtube listeners they know we just have a picture of our logo and then the audio right um that and like maybe we'll get one real sponsor i think that's probably the- yeah it's uh we're looking for an actual sponsor um and honestly, I would even be less interested in us gaining anything from it and more. I would love if we could get a sponsor that offered us like a discount code that we mm-hmm. could give to listeners. That's you know, selfless of you. I would, I would take that as a win, <laughs> you know, something, something along those lines. I will contact Johnson and Johnson and see if they'd be interested in sponsoring your podcast. I'd say there's a, a negative 1% chance. Just Can we get like a, a, a 5% off on baby powder? <laughs> <laughs> After the inappropriate joke, I just told him, I'm not sure I want them to hear it. Uh, sorry, yeah, maybe something like that. That's exciting. Uh, thank you for starting the, the video portion of it like right after right after this one so i don't have to be on camera well when you're back on episode 40 we'll yeah to... don't worry you'll be back soon <laughs> enough what i'd like to do is i'd like to have the listeners email everyone at dr and dork email.com email.com and ask them if they would like to have me back uh for yeah. uh, maybe a, a pop culture update which i'm about to do okay I'm gonna, i Sorry. just thought i would give you guys the things that i'm watching Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. This you got. We're me. not very up to date with things, so we'll tell well, you. Again, you and I, you and I are we're in different generations too, a, a little yeah. bit. So, uh, Cobra Kai. I just finished up season three of Cobra Kai. My for aunt said she loved the Karate Kid. Yeah. Uh, I I, like I, it. I I loved it. Yeah. It's it's incredible, and I'm doing this mostly for Lisa, because I know because she literally watched all ten episodes on January first. Yeah. When it first came out. Okay. So shout out to Lisa Plord. Uh, Shit's Creek. Uh, yeah, we just started I, we're watching, watching that. that too. I got through all six seasons of that. That's fantastic. Um, on on Peacock is a show called Yellowstone, which I love. Mm, your parents. I would say I. Uh, so the barbershop I go to always has that plan. Yeah. So. Yellowstone's a great show. I just finished a show called The Undoing on HBO. I haven't heard it's of uh, Nicole Kidman and Hugh Grant. And that was excellent. I watched Midnight Sky on Netflix yesterday with what was George that? Clooney. That's sort of a sci-fi uh, movie for you, Frankie. Uh, I liked it. Uh, it was not a dislike for me. I liked it. It was, it was good. I liked it. 
didn't sound like a very passionate like okay. that it sounded like a no. six out of ten no i didn't love i didn't love 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 it but i'm a i'm a george clooney fan and um i think he's a really good actor and the show the show the movie was good i would highly recommend it for all of the 37 listeners out there um, yes. and i thought i would do a uh, wonder woman uh 84 oh review. yeah did you go and see that or did you watch it on tv yeah it was free on tv i watched it did you guys watch it yet no yeah. where'd you uh, watch it on you can watch it on uh, hbo now i think or HBO. Okay. We'll have to go check that out. Is it good? It's two and a half hours long. Oh. So get your popcorn ready. Oh. Um, the first 15 minutes for me was snooze fest. Yeah. Uh, but it got better. Um, I'm, Gal Gadot was incredible. Uh, big fan of Gal Gadot. And Kristen Wiig was in it, which I didn't expect. And it, it actually, they had the, the two of them played r- very well off of each other. And uh, I ended up, the movie ended up winning me over. Now it wasn't as good as the original Gal Gadot Wonder Woman, but it was definitely worth worth the watch. All right. Now I got to stop you for a second. Gal Gadot, or is it Gal Gadot? Gadot. You probably pronounce it wrong. Yeah, I I'm sure I do here. I feel like it's Gal Gadot, but I will you know write in at Doctor and the Dork at Gmail dot com. <laughs> Doctor and Dork, not the Dork. <laughs> Doctor and Dork at Gmail dot com, and let us know how to pronounce it. Yes, please. I think it's Gal Gadot, Frankie, but again, I could be wrong. <laughs> um, well, that's, listen, that's all I have. I mean, I'm I'm wiped out. Well, that's perfect. We're wiped out too, so I think we're. I mean, even. we only had a couple of questions because uh, the pod usually doesn't run so long. Yeah, and everything but else, you know the what? conversation usually takes care of itself. So, and you came Olivia, more did ready you than us. Yeah, it has recording in the top left of my screen. Okay, good. I did live in. You guys, Florida, by the way, you guys look fantastic. Uh, Christmas tree probably should be put away at some. Yeah, point. we're we got oh, the bin God. down. We're if I had my it. way, it wouldn't even be up. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but in, but I would like to plug my upcoming show. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. Uh, I will be performing Friday night, January eighth, at the Elbow Room. Okay. Which is in West Hartford, Connecticut. The show begins at eight. I'm not sure what my role in the show is going to be. I may be hosting it. I may be featured. I'm definitely not headlining it. Okay. Okay. And it's at eight o'clock. The number is 860-236-6195. You can call them for tickets or on Instagram, Kinsley22. And of course, on Facebook, Don Kinsley. I'm the guy in the orange jacket uh, (laughs) in the picture. That's me. You can follow me. I'm going to just watch my followers increase steadily skyrocket oh, after yeah. this episode you're gonna see a <laughs> solid 37 new followers <laughs> all right i mean i have a plea to all of your listeners okay the fact that there's only three reviews is, <laughs> right, is kind of sad i mean you have i mean you both have family members right yeah um, they alleged- don't listen to it on apple <laughs> podcast though that's our issue any oh on apple well, i mean just yeah hey we'll- guys hey guys We'll make all of our friends just put five stars in next time they're over. Put five stars in. Write a little note. I mean, Thanks help you, help help Frankie and Olivia out. This is a tremendous podcast. I'm honored to be, I think, your second guest. Yeah, uh, third. 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 We've had Tyler and we've had AJ. Lucky number I, three, Dad. Yeah, I heard AJ. I didn't hear Tyler. Yeah. Uh, but this is a tremendous podcast. It's a, it's a must listen every week for me on Tuesdays when it comes out. Thank you. And uh, I appreciate well, when we make it big, we'll make sure to still invite you on. <laughs> Again, viewer, uh, listeners, email Dr. And the Dork at gmail. Not, not <laughs> Dork, Dr. And Dork. <laughs> Dr. And Dork at gmail.com. You All right. Me and back, done in the future. Want me back. Um, feel free to send us uh, your comedy schedule going into the future. We would love to keep plugging you and, uh, I know we have several friends that would love yeah, to get out. True. I have a couple of friends that have tossed around the idea of getting on stage themselves. And uh, you know what? This would be the perfect opportunity to get them out there and, you know, at least get them to yeah. see it. Frankie, you know? listen, we can do that. There's there's something called open mic nights at the Elbow Room. It's on Wednesday nights. Yeah. Let's get together. Let's, let's get some beers. We'll go downstairs and get your friends together and we'll just do open mic. It's It's no pressure you just get up and you can read jokes if you want you can you can you know you can bomb it's there's no <laughs> pressure there's no audience it's just you and other comedians just trying to get on stage and get some experience 
Perfect. Oh, that sounds perfect. All right, Don. Well, if there's nothing else, would you like to say goodbye to our listeners? Goodbye, podcast people. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, Don. It has been a pleasure. Okay, everybody. So as we mentioned in the front half of this episode, Don's upcoming comedy skit has been changed. Now it's going to be at the Shish Kebab House of Afghanistan, also just called The Shish if you're looking for him. And that is going to be Friday at 7 o'clock. So make sure you're there. All right. See you, everybody. Bye, guys.